Those of us that drive love the open road, the roundabouts, the traffic of a bustling city. But is there a better way, a less polluting way, a way that involves no vehicles, no traffic, just walking? We're going to try and answer that question in the only city builder that used to have donut vans, City Skylines 2. I started by choosing one of the new maps just added to the game by Colossal Order, Coral Riches. North American, hot and flat. Perfect for all the walking our citizens are about to be doing. I named it Strollston, which seemed to me to be fitting. Big, wide, broad and flat. Not one mountain, hill or lump in sight. Perfect for today's challenge. The key to our success was going to be making judicious use of the pedestrian street. This was described as only allowing foot traffic, side note and service and delivery vehicles, but no cars, no motorbikes, no trucks. Everyone would walk everywhere, or so I hoped. And just before we do that, a word from our sponsors, Instant Gaming. If you wish to order City Skylines 2, please consider using my affiliate link, which you'll find in the pinned comment below and on screen right now. When doing so, you will receive a Steam key, which can be redeemed on Steam as normal, but with some fantastic discounts. Plenty of other games are available too, I do love a bit of FC24 footy, and Forza is certainly my cup of tea as well. Thank you very much for your support, let's get back to the video. So after checking the wind direction, deciding on the location for industry, I started laying out my pedestrian streets with plenty of space for residential growth. We had an outside power line, so it was easy to hook up a transformer for power, and after checking the flow of the water, took care of the water and sewage needs as well. To be honest, my biggest concern was how far would people walk to get to work and to shop? Well, guess we're going to find out. I zoned residential, commercial and industry nice and close to see if we can encourage the walking we desired, and I waited for somebody to move in. Soon hopefully and we didn't have to wait too long they arrived in their droves but they were in their cars they were not walking they were driving on the pedestrian streets without a care in the world why oh why so i followed the first offender a member of the marquette family to see where they lived they had started this whole trend of driving and i wanted to get to the bottom of it and would you believe it it was karen and Freddie, Cameron, we're going to be keeping a close eye on you, although at the age of senior, I don't think you'll be undertaking this rebellious driving for too long. <coughs> Sorry. Anyway, more and more vehicles flooded in, recklessly driving on our walking streets, and already I was starting to think I was facing an impossible task, but I would not be beaten. I decided to make it so awkward to drive, so expensive, so annoying that they would just have to walk. They would love to walk. They would walk everywhere. I then wondered if the roundabout that was one third car road and two thirds pedestrian street was sort of confusing people. So I upgraded to more walking and less driving and even removed the ability to either U-turn or drive straight on into town. Would that work? And then we found a walker. Yasmin Keats. Yes, she was homeless and feeling pretty neutral about it at the moment, but she had a job and she was walking there. Yay, Yasmin! Maybe if I zoned plenty of residential, Yasmin would eventually be able to afford a home once she'd got to work. I watched her as she enjoyed the open road free of cars and trucks, apart from the trucks going to and from the industry, and eventually she reached her place of employment. Would the money enable Yasmin to buy a house? Uh, let's hope so. I decided to keep taps. Well, back to our growing founding city, and the hearse had to be called. Something we were unable to provide ourselves, so it's going to be driving in from outside the city to collect and oh it looks like they're able to gather from a distance so wi-fi body collection uh yep they were definitely gone well back to growing we kept up with our demand commercial and residential hoping it was all close enough to walk to still vehicles were entering strollston but i began to think is this how the game starts off a new resident or perhaps a new business owner that they have to arrive by vehicle first but then later on would learn to walk but i soon forgot about that as we were now a tiny village with more cash to make pedestrian roads 
Plus, we'd unlocked a rock mansion, and we all know rock stars are well known for keeping the rules 100%, so they were going to walk everywhere, weren't they? So, what had we unlocked that could help us in our task? Ah, lots and lots of roads, and a couple of services. Okay, let's carry on. After a nice, easy, within walking distance medical clinic, I decided against the cemetery at the moment, as I wanted to test the magically working hearses a little bit more, and I wanted to save my one development point for roundabouts or road services or we'll see as we go along. So the Rock Mansion went into the heart of our pedestrian community. I was sure they would be a beacon, a shining example of anti-car use. I also decided to make use of the new medium density demand with some shops nearby. It was at this moment I took a quick pause to check the cities to wiki and found out that pedestrian streets are supposed to be for foot traffic only, as it said earlier, but we can expect some delivery drivers and service vehicles on them. CO wouldn't lie to me, would they? Hmm, I would continue on regardless. And I was noticing less cars on the road than expected. People were driving for a new house, or if they moved house, yes, but pedestrians were increasing, albeit very slowly. I gazed across at all the dirty, disgusting roads I would not be using, even the hideous bridges, but then I hit on a plan. Why deprive the residents of Strollston the beauty of a roundabout? I embarked on my task of upgrading every single junction to a small roundabout which as it would happen <laughs> took us to small village who knew would this milestone now help me reach the goal of a no car city maybe education was the key could we educate out of the citizens their obvious love of the vehicle and entrench them with a fondness for walking instead Ooh, another hearse has been called not good for the miller family but great for science we followed the hearse in it stopped though for only about a second or two and once again wi-fi body collection Okay, so hearses don't enjoy the pedestrian streets. At least they weren't encouraging driving by showing how good it was to other citizens. And new people moving in. The Millers were 100% gone. Oddly enough, the roundabouts proved popular and citizens would mimic the movement of a car as they walked around them. They would stick in their lanes carefully and ever so slightly signal as they turned off. Sometimes even using them to do U-turns or other illegal driving, but perfectly legal walking maneuvers. And look at this. At one point, the traffic flow had hit 100%. Yeah, it was now sort of 80%, probably due to all the people moving in and the deliveries, but 100% was possible. We could do it. So to education. I wanted elementary and high schools within easy reach of expansion, planning to use all the space around them for more housing, and these, and all the roundabouts, led us to Large Village. So let's have a look. Any unlocks that could help us in our challenge? No, but I decided on road services and parking, maybe to encourage people to leave their cars at the entrance to the city. Also college to keep the education train moving, and welfare office to keep people happy, despite being constantly fined for using their darn cars. So would road service help? Well, how about a traffic light at the start of the city? Let's make driving a real pain. I'd also love to beautify our pedestrian streets, but unfortunately none of the tree, wide or sidewalk or other options would work on pedestrian streets. Well, at least we had parking. We were making bank and had enough in the bank, so why not go the whole hog with some gigantic overground parking? It was sleek. It was modern, it was spacious, everything a driver would want to park their car and not struggle on the slow pedestrian streets in their vehicle, right? Right? Well, as I waited, the citizens taunted me. They were using the car park to turn around in, to cause more traffic, to be a nuisance with their awful vehicles. But then it happened. People finally started to drive in and stay in. They arrived in their tens, then hundreds, more and more and more. They were parking and walking. Was this it? Had we hit a turning point in our 100% walkable pedestrian-only city? When our parking plan had worked and traffic was backing up, they wanted to use the car park. They were drawn in. They couldn't help but park and leave their cars behind. Walking was increasing and growing. Dodging the weirdly floating cars became a hobby that families just could enjoy together. Like tiny ants, my citizens walked around and around. 
things were definitely looking up. So to keep morale growing, we added a police station and a welfare office. And as you can see, the people rejoiced. So we kept expanding, keeping the people distracted with shop shops and more shops. I also decided to highly tax and hopefully discourage more industry and commercial from coming to Strolton with their dirty trucks and instead encourage growth with lower taxes for the people, hoping to stop them abandoning their homes over and over. Medium density housing was built across from the hideous traffic and smelly car park to show the people what they'd avoided by choosing to walk instead. I decided to help with my encouragement of parking and not driving to lower and then eventually totally remove the parking fee altogether and then to remove the traffic lights to enable a swifter entrance to the parking lot grand village i gingerly checked what we've been gifted to see if it would aid or hinder our challenge and the district creation tool along with policies caught my eye further down the list there were buses which perhaps seemed a good way to encourage alternative transport and not use cars but would that really be in line with our no vehicle challenge hmm. i created a district while rubbing my hands in glee at the policies i would soon enact to curb driving and there was nothing i checked the city policies and we could adjust tax Taxi fees. Would a high fee discourage the vehicles or would a lower fee encourage more taxis and less private cars? If in doubt, take the money. Oh, mustn't forget the roundabouts. Pedestrian abouts, walkabouts. Yes, that's it. They shall forever be known as walkabouts, trademark. I also took the opportunity to add some low rent housing, hopefully helping with the housing abandonment problem that kept rearing its ugly head from time to time. And I decided to check in on Karen and Yasmin. Oh, okay, guess they're no longer with us. Offices were next on the list. We wanted to make sure that our highly educated citizens had somewhere suitable to work then i remembered the upgrade to the school that would provide happiness and health so made room for those as well i then thought well i need more jobs to attract more workers so purchasing tiles with access to farms or an oil felt prudent using that space we expanded some more um question can a farm work on a pedestrian street Mm, let's find out well the farms have companies that have moved in employees and 100 percent efficiency plus in our production panel we were making more grain than we ever needed so i guess that's a success farms on pedestrian streets with not a tractor in sight nice then we hit tiny town and this brought some goodies along with it mixed housing so that's going to cut down on traveling time to the shops for sure plus more ways to make money and keep people happy at home with internet and post and biggest of all the policies surely some of these would discourage driving in strolston surely would they well our one district needed to extend to cover the whole of town and then any policies that were enacted would be covering everywhere so what did we have energy awareness why not recycling and um, it says less free time sure maybe they think less about driving roadside parking yes a hundred percent do not park on our pedestrian roads please we're going to charge you for it speed bumps for sure why not cars would be slower if they dared to drive at all and people would get their extra steps in climbing over those lovely humps in the road that's how it works isn't it i'm sure you sure about that well I, I can't see the speed bumps but i'm assuming they're there so i checked the traffic flow and that looks to me like over 90 percent what do you think? More growth meant more signature buildings, which meant more happiness. All was going well. It was then I decided I would continue to try and keep the people at home with amazing, super fast fiber internet with green coverage across all the town. Plus for the older ones, we have perfect postal coverage and a post office. Citywide recreation was abysmal, but I discovered we could tempt the citizens to enjoy what was called indoor recreation with the Grand Hotel, plus 75 indoor recreation, and the National Gallery of Art with plus 100. Botanical gardens and fountain plazas would encourage people to go outside, tempting them to use their vehicular transports, so those would be avoided. The Grand Hotel was enough to keep us in the green all over town. And also, it would take us to 
Boomtown. Now we were cooking with gas. Policies such as heavy traffic ban that promised to forbid trucks and heavy traffic from entering the district sounded like just what we needed to succeed. We'd have to be careful as the district we had took in the entire town and the entrance of the highway. So it's going to be interesting to see how that would affect things. It was then that I noticed that our overground parking was chock a block. So I upgraded it with a car wash, which made people happy, and then decided to unlock the underground parking and automated parking buildings. To make room, I extended the pedestrian road and placed this magnificent edifice to the car. But would it be enough? Parking fee zero, and yes, they would park. Vehicle after vehicle, bikes and cars would choose to park. But wait a minute, those dirty rotters have tricked me again. <laughs> They were using it as a long cut, that's the opposite of a shortcut, just to get back to the road again and avoid the traffic. Uh -huh. But then, through the use of my secret spy drones, I found them. Parked cars, parked bikes, the people loved it. They flocked to park over and over and over and over and over and over and over. Traffic grew and grew as people drove to the car park to then leave their cars and walk around our burgeoning town. But wait, most of the traffic is outside the city and we were heading towards 95% and even more traffic flow. Is there a way to push the traffic further outside our city? Yep, there is. Deleting roads, adding more pedestrian streets. I think that will do it. And the traffic is outside the city limits but I think the car parks might be causing more traffic. What can we do? How about moving the car parks to their own road? Oops, do these cars count toward traffic if they're floating like this? But to be honest, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure what's gonna happen with those, so let's just check our traffic flow anyway, and wow, it's so close to 100%, I can't believe it. Oh, dog parks. Our lovely walking citizens had no parks. Um, even though they were happy with the indoor recreation, that indoor recreation became less fun when the dogs had no outdoor recreation. You know what I mean? Also, we can't forget the college, the firehouse, and let's unlock and place a crematorium so we don't have to rely on Wi-Fi and magic death care being stuck in our traffic. And the parking was chocker, so we added even more parking of the underground variety this time, with free parking, of course. I'd like to just uh, take a look at the underground parking, see what it looks like. Oh man, I guess it's a good job it's free. Yeah, well, I did want to try the buses, but with 99.9% .9 of the people walking and only the post van or ambulance on the road, really, there just seemed no point. So how far could I push this? How big could we go? Well, busy town, that'd be a good start, but we'd reach higher with the help of even increasing amounts of parking lots. Oh, yeah. I also realised that people are going to need stone for use in their house upkeep and upgrades and things like that, so I just threw in a stone mine to care for that need and keep costs down. Brainwave, I decided to unlock some squares and enjoy access to trains. To unlock trains, place a rail yard and station, hook it all up, add an outside line and wait and it worked train after train are bringing in more and more people who preferred their legs over cars they happily strolled around in strollston without bringing a car with them but what if i hooked up even more outside connections using all the platforms available to us to have at least two connections to each of these outside nearby cities once all the rails were hooked up yeah, trains were backing up. More and more people were moving in and walking. Fantastic. And then we hit Big Town, where high density would take things to a whole nother level. Oh, and the Streamline Diner, of course. So that got me thinking, could we add a cargo train station and decrease the cargo traffic heading into the city? Well, once hooked up, we set up the cargo route and waited and it worked. More goods trains coming in. Yes, we knew there would be trucks, but maybe not so many coming into the city from the highway? Question mark? Yikes, this traffic had got pretty bad. It kept going and 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 going. Maybe a train line on the other city would help alleviate the traffic? Uh, no, maybe three? Well, it certainly brought people in, but look, traffic was going down. 
before it reached all the way down here and along to the end but now it's only up to here maybe just maybe we'd cracked it and we were able to have a 100 traffic free pedestrian only city yes no traffic on the highway had we done it well we just had to deal with the danger of floating cars and looking at it traffic was near to 100 as was humanly possible demand was through the roof money was going up and up and the town was growing exponentially we'd hit great town even managed to build a state-of-the-art university large hadron collider and we'd hit small town and we had our first high rises and we built the world's highest radio telescope from this amazing view we could see that our pedestrian street only city had a very bright future indeed so that's what happens if you try and build a pedestrian only city let me know what you think be sure to leave a like and subscribe before you go and have a great day take care bye bye